Kashmir proudly carries a heritage of thousands of years of culture with well documented history. Kashmir Yath of today carries this legacy. Dig deep into the roots of the Kashmiri culture and we discover that its origin is the same Hindu culture which has left an indelible imprint on all the subcultures seen in the Indian subcontinent. Take a walk down the path of the Kashmiri history and watch yourself get enthralled by it. The remnants of some of the architectural spectacles lay testimony to its past grandeur each having its own remarkable significance whether it is the fine tuning of the almanac at the vicharnag or the science of astronomy being reflected at the martan temple these along with the people the spirit and the legacy of kashmir are what make up its resplendent heritage the past grandeur heritage and opulence of the kashmir valley surpasses human imagination and a sense of it can be felt by visiting some of the architectural marvels in the valley especially the temples unfortunately most of the magnificent temples lie as mere ruins today however still holding to their majestic spirit and history The Sun Temple of Martand is located on a picturesque plateau from where the Kashmir Valley is visible. Now this temple uh, Martan was dedicated to sun sun uh, sun god and constructed by Lalita Ditya and people believe that uh, the foundation was laid according to the astronomical table which was known to the ancient uh, scholars of Kashmir The entire temple complex has been conceptualized in a way to give the idea of the solar system with the sun god himself sitting in the center. The base of the main sanctum, sanctorium, has 365 idols depicting each day of the year. Few smaller temples surrounding the main sanctum sanctorium depict the planets and the four seasons. The knowledge of the creators of the temple complex about the planetary system of our solar system is simply astonishing. The architects enlive the thoughts and ideas of the astronomers and in turn the sculptors put life into the stone carvings and idols in the temple complex. The temples built in the Kashmir Valley were perfect examples of science of Vastu Shastra. The study of earth's magnetic fields and combining it with the science of Vastu Shastra was unparalleled in the contemporary history. Parihaspora was chosen as the capital city by the great king Lalit Aditya. owing to his higher elevation a visit to the plateau and the remnants of the vast temple complex throw enough light on the status 
of the opulence the town must have enjoyed during the reign of the powerful King Lalita Ditya around 1300 years ago. Situated around 21 kilometers northeast of the capital city of Srinagar, the town has been very prominently mentioned in Kalhan's Raj Tarangini, which was written thousands of years ago. He writes that the emperor used 84,000 tolas of gold, translating to around 840 kilograms to make the idol of Lord Vishnu. Though the stone remains are existing in the shape of ruins, one can imagine that the barbarian plunderers who ruled Kashmir from 14th century must have taken possession of these precious idols of the temples. The destruction unleashed by the rabid Islamic rulers manifests itself through the stone ruins. But the carvings done on them are the standing testimony of the craftsmanship of the then Kashmiri artisans. King Lalita Ditya shifted his capital from Srinagar to the plateau of Parihaspura to save it from occasionally rampaging water of the river Vitasta. But he might not be knowing that someday down the lanes of history, some xenophobic rulers will come and destroy the articles of faith created by him in the name of their own faith. The then Kashmiri society believed in Advaitvad, which means non-dualism and monotheistic entity of God. However, they, in order to establish contact of Atma with different manifestations of Paramatma, that is God, constructed abodes for the deities. These places were used to express their undiluted love for the Lord and pay a tribute to all gunas, which means virtues of the Almighty. The two temples, one dedicated to Lord Vishnu and another to Lord Shiva, constructed by King Avantivarman in the 9th century, depict the phenomenon of creation and sustenance of the universe by the supreme power. Situated around 30 kilometers southeast of the capital city of Srinagar, the Shiva and Vishnu temples of Avantipura tell the tales of the richness of the ancient Kashmiri architecture. A very interesting facet of Kashmir culture is its architecture, and especially the temple architecture, the stone architecture. Take the Avantipura ruins. They are unique in their own type. The pillars, the foundation, and the stones, the, the car, wood car, stone carving, and above all, the front piece which we are placed on these temples, of which Kalhana says, he says that I collected much of history from the front piece of front from the front piece of uh, of uh, the temples which he visited during his lifetime. The Shankar Gaurishwara Temple is located in Pattan, near Baramula. The temple was built by Shankara Varman of Kashmir, who ruled between 883 and 902 AD. He was the successor to King Avanti Varman. Patan during his reign was known as Shankar Patna. This was the King Shankar Varman's capital city. It is 27 kilometers away from Srinagar city. 
he dedicated the temple to Lord Shiva. Apart from this temple, he also built another temple next to it in honor of his wife Suganda and named it Sugandesha Temple. This temple was also dedicated to Lord Shiva, built to the same plan and with intricate carvings. However, the hammers of the iconoclasts couldn't dilapidate the soul of both these temples. Some of the temples, however, were saved from destruction. They act as witness to the past glory of Kashmir. Every remaining block of the stone telling its own tale. Shankaracharya Temple is the living monument standing tall in the middle of the Srinagar city and connecting the grand past of Kashmir with modern times. It is magnificently existing atop the Gopadri Hill. The temple dedicated to Lord Shiva was for the first time constructed by King Gopaditya who ruled around 300 years before Christ. The old historical accounts of Nilmat Puran and Raj Tarangini maintain that the rocks from where the temple stones were carved out were ferried from another hill. Since entire landscape around the Gopadri hill was part of a huge lake, the stones were transported in boats and then onwards taken uphill on elephants. At the time, it was known as Jeshteshwar Temple. Jeshteshwar is another name for Lord Shiva. It is mentioned in historical records that Adi Shankaracharya, during his travel to northern India, stayed at the temple. Throughout the landscape of Kashmir, we can see a trail of temple ruins. Such magnificent heritage of the mankind has been destructed by the Islamic bigots. However, in the case of Jeshteshwar or Shankaracharya temple, the script was changed. No harm was done to the temple structure, but Shiva Linga was broken and removed from the sanctum sanctorium. The marauders tried to give Islamic color to the structure creating falsified stories like Suleiman, one of the prophets of Islam, visited the place a couple of thousand years ago. An unsuccessful attempt to coin a new name, Takht e Suleiman, was made. Neither Neelmat, Puran or Kalhan's Raj Tarangini, so far the best treatise on the history of ancient Kashmir, mentioned the said name. Just as this was an unsuccessful attempt to adulterate the history of a 2,000-year-old temple, there were abortive steps taken to change the texture of the language in the valley. We can say that in this time in Kashmir, we can see the Sanskrit words in the Sanskrit. In the words, 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 से जो शब्द कश्मीरी में आए हैं उनमें जो दैनिक चेंज हुआ है वॉवेल और कंसोनेंट की तब्दीलियां हुई है उनके बारे में सेट रूल्स है जैसे संस्कृत का श जो है कश्मीरी के ह में चेंज होता है फॉर एग्जांपल शिक्षण कश्मीरी में कहेंगे इसको शिक्षण श छ में चेंज होता है और श ह में so, Sanskrit grammatical features are still found in Kashmiri. We can say, jo Kashmiri bhasha hai, ye bhasha, is bhasha ne apna jo, matlab, pura grammar, 
थॉट प्रोसेस एक बड़े झील से प्राप्त किया है और वो झील क्या थी वो भारतीय सभ्यता की झील भारतीयता आज भी कश्मीरी भाषा में आ रही है और है समाई हुई है कुछ लोगों का ये कहना है कि नहीं कश्मीरी तो चौधरी शताब्दी से ही आई है इसमें देखिए हर कहीं फारसी अरबी के की शब्दावली यूज़ होती है हाँ फारसी शब्दावली इसमें है इसमें सेंट्रल एशियन लैंग्वेज की शब्दावली भी है जैसे जो इस वक्त रेशा की समावार एक शब्द है समावार इज एक्चुअली रेशन वर्ड शॉप इट इज़ आल्सो फ्रॉम रेशा सो शब्द कहीं से भी आ सकते हैं लेकिन भाषा का जो स्वरूप है भाषा का जो अपना वो रंग होता है वो कभी चेंज नहीं हो हमारी कश्मीरी भाषा का रंग वही है जो संस्कृत भाषा का रंग है कितना भी इस पर इन्फ्लुंस दूसरी भाषाओं का हो लेकिन इसका जो वो ग्रामर इसका जो स्ट्रक्चर वो स्ट्रक्चर वही रहेगा जो इसको सदियों पहले था Pandey Ratan Temple which was once upon a time 8 kilometers away from the present capital Srinagar is now almost in the middle of the expanding town and geographically located inside the army cantonment Kalhan's Raj Tarangini throws enough light on the antecedents of this temple and the town in which it was situated In the 10th century AD, Parvar Sena, the king of Kashmir, had his capital at that place. Due to flooding of Vitasta River, the place used to get inundated and the king shifted his capital 8 kilometers northwards present day Srinagar. The old city came to be known as Puran Disthan and slowly the name degenerated into Pandey Ratan. The temple was made by King Parvasena and stands magnificently in the middle of a spring. The Pandey Ratan temple survived the strokes of Sultan Sikandar's xenophobic hammer because as per some historical records it was submerged in water of vitasta during his reign today it is the epitome of art and architecture of the kashmiri ancient culture a small temple is located in the gandharbal district of jammu and kashmir on the banks of the world famous manasbal lake It is around 32 kilometers away from Srinagar city. This temple was dedicated to Lord Shiva. It beautifully stands submerged partially in the clear water of the serene Manasbal Lake. The name Manasbal is said to be a derivative of the word Mansarovar. The delightful temple is roofed like a quadrangular prism. The rooftop adorns the weathered carving of Lord Ganesha. If one takes a plunge into the water of the Manasbal temple, one can feel a 1 foot tall shivalinga inside the submerged temple the deitha temple is located in the uri sector of jammu and kashmir deitha temple is also called the data temple
This temple is also dedicated to Lord Shiva. The temple thrives at the entrance of the ancient route to the valley through Baramula and proudly welcome the devotees. Currently, this temple is located just a few kilometers away from the line of control and the Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Sitting at the precincts of the temple, amidst the most pristine Himalayan environments, one can feel the spiritual vibes in the air. Most notable among the iconoclast rulers was Sultan Sikandar. It can be imagined how many temples and articles of faith would have been destroyed by him so that the title of Butchikan, which means idol breaker, would have been bestowed upon him by the history chronicles. Butchikan ruled from 1389 to 1413 AD and was the sixth ruler of the Shah Miri dynasty. He is known for destroying the iconic temple of Martan and the temple complex of Parihaspura. While on his temple breaking spree, he also did not spare the Shivalinga of Shankaracharya temple. The problem with such fanatic rulers is that their way to the throne is paved by their comparatively moderate predecessors. However, during the rule, they unleash a reign of terror on those subjects who profess different faiths from their own. Most unfortunate reality is that after the exit of such rulers, their successors who are considered more tolerant do not take any steps or initiatives to undo the damage done by these fanatics. In Kashmir, this narrative was enacted by the Islamic rulers who conspired their ways to the throne in the year 1339. It is noteworthy that initially the alien rulers respected local Kashmiri traditions, beliefs and faiths. But slowly, with the ruling power at their command, they started forcible conversions of the masses and the process reaches crescendo when Sikandar ascended the throne. It has been told by the historians that such was the hatred of Sultan for the Hindu temples that when he was not able to destroy the sprawling temple complex of Sun Temple of Martan, he ordered it to be stuffed with wood and set it on fire. It kept on burning for months together. The heat managed to blow off the roof, but the pilasters and the walls still exist to tell the tale of the past grandeur of the temple and the science of astronomy of which this temple was a living example. It took 480 long years of Islamic rule to end in Kashmir and with, with the advent of Sikh and Hindu rule, when the period of persecution of the original inhabitants of Kashmir Valley ended. With that started the rebuilding, restoration and renovation process of those ancient monuments which were mentioned in the historic document Raj Tarangini written by Kalhan. Kalhan's Raj Tarangini mentions the sacred spring of Tula Mula as Mata Ragini Kund. From ancient times, the temple had remained a pilgrimage center of great importance. Today, the temple restored by Maharaja Ranbir Singh is known as Khir Bhavani. Every year, people from far off places congregate here to celebrate the annual fair. Alongside the idol of Mother Goddess, a Shivalinga has also been consecrated. The phenomena of Shiv Shakti, which is believed to be the cause of creation and sustenance of the universe, is very well manifested through the idols. An interesting belief is that the water of the temple spring, which normally looks blue, turns dark red or black in case of any impending calamity in Kashmir. 
Nagbal Temple is located in the town of Ananthnag. Historically, it is one of the oldest established towns in the world. Some estimates trace the antiquity of the town to around 5000 years BC. Neil Mathpuran has mentioned Nagpal Spring, on which today a temple complex is situated. The renovation of the temple has been done by second Dogra ruler Maharaja Ranbir Singh and further additions made by his son Maharaja Pratap Singh. The Kashmiris constructed most of their temples around natural springs. The wise men of Kashmir wanted to perpetuate a practice of energizing the water with positive energy. They knew that though the elixir of life, excess flow of water can result in floods and cause destruction of life, hence the thought of imparting positive energy. From time immemorial, people have been thronging the Nagpal temple to take a dip in the sulphur spring situated alongside with clear water spring. The sulphur spring holding medicinal values still cures many a kind of skin disease. In the Marthand area, there are two ancient temples dedicated to the sun god. One is on a higher plateau and lying in ruins and another is just two kilometers away from the ancient one. The second temple is in renovated form and also popularly known as the Martin Temple. Jai Martin Nath Bhagawan ki Jai Ho Jis thaan par aap aake baithe hain is thaan ka vastrik naam jo hai Martand hai Martand ka apagramsh ho gaya hai Aadhani kaal mein ab yeh Martin naam se prasid ho gaya hai Lekin likhne mein har jaga Martand hi likhte hain Martand Bhagawan Suri ka naam hai The pundits in the Matan temple historically have been chroniclers of the family history of the devotees who were visiting the temples and those pilgrims who used to come here en route to their pilgrimage to the Amarnath shrine. For past many centuries, it was practice amongst the pundits of the temple to visit the devotees in plains during winters. During their visits, the pundits would collate the data of the new additions of the family and would reconcile the same in their family history accounts. And this water is a very special thing. As much as the rain grows, 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 वो शेषनाग यहाँ से कोई 80 किलोमीटर दूर, शेषनाग झील से ये नीचे 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 दरिया बनके सूर्य चरणों से नीचे निकल के बाहर चलता रहता है। यहाँ आकर ये जो मछलियाँ आप देख रहे हैं कुंड में, ये बिल्कुल पित्र रूपी पवित्र मछलियाँ हैं। इनको यहाँ किसी भी संप्रदाय का कोई भी व्यक्ति न पकड़ेग हाँ कभी कोई मर भी जाती है तो उसको हम निकाल के मिट्टी में दबा देते हैं तो यही है कश्यप पत्नी आदित्य के तेर में पुत्र का सांत तेर में सूर्य का सांत इसी का नाम मार्तंड है बोलो मार्तंड भगवान की जय A hillock in Srinagar city, Hari Parbat, has many temples. One of the famous ones is the Sharika Chakreshwar Temple. This temple is just outside the famous Hari Parbat fort in Srinagar city. This deity is the presiding deity of Kashmir. The temple is called Siddha Pita or Shakti Pita. Navratra is the festival annually performed here. The cosmic mother 
here represents the solar energy having seven components seven worlds seven colors of light seven rishis of veda vidya the energy here is personified as solar energy this serene temple stands proudly at the foothills of the gopadari hill and the iconic shankaracharya temple rebuilt during the hindu dogra rule this temple is also a shakti peetha like any other shakti peetha in the valley it has a shiv temple within the precincts of the temple as is the pattern of any other temple in kashmir one can spot a clear water spring in the compound of the temple with a shivalinga right in the center the zeshta mata temple is located between the famous dal lake and the himalayan foothills in the shrinagar city This temple is visited by followers from within the country as well as from outside the country. Zeshta Mata is said to be the goddess of protection. It has been a tradition to offer cooked yellowish rice which is called tehar in Kashmiri on all Thursdays during the month of Zeshta. This famous ancient shrine of Kashmir for worldly people is a place for attaining siddhi, riddhi and buddhi in all fields which means attainment of spiritual power, prosperity and intellect respectively. Each of these temples had their own tale to tell stories and facts etched in the memoir of the resurrected past of kashmir just like these temples an isolated locale of kashmir has thousands of years of intellect and knowledge which can still be felt in the air uh, i would also like to uh, speak about uh, an important place which are nag in which is at a distance of about uh, 10 or 12 kilometers from the main city on the way to amar to amarnath cave uh, we are told that the yatris going to amarnath used to stay here for as as one staying place or what we call the uh, the padao one staying place now about which are nag uh the story goes that uh, this locality was predominated by the people by the scholars who were well versed in the astronomical science of ancient kashmir because the calendar uh, which is being published in kashmir today uh, talks of the kashmiri kashmiri uh, era it starts it is something 5000 and something that means this calendar has maintained the story of kashmir uh, since 5000 years this is the calendar and in vicharnag uh, i think that uh, there should have been uh, an institute where astronomy was taught uh, because there in, there are indications uh that uh, astronomical sciences remain confined to that locality uh, <coughs> and there are still uh people in kashmir who uh can who have continued the, the pundits have continued uh, this calendar 
uh, for, 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 for their festivals and for their astronomical uh, studies. And, uh, and in this way, uh, it has per perpetuated for a long time till, uh, till date. Uh, I think uh, uh, more research should be done on the importance of Vichar Nag as the seat of uh, astronomical sciences from where it originated. Some of the ancient temples which could not be restored during the Dogra rule are now in the process of being restored. The devotees and Hindu pilgrims who have utmost faith in the age old culture which actually speaking is Kashmiri, want to see the ancient glory of their temples being restored. A temple at Gopi Tirth in the Srinagar city has been rebuilt in the recent times. It is augmented with the presence of a sulphur spring. One can even find a few relics from the former temple exhibited here. An ancient temple at Gupta Ganga in Srinagar city, which was spotted in the army cantonment, is in the process of getting rebuilt. Shivalinga from an ancient temple was found here and is going to be consecrated in the new temple. One of the temples at Uri, called the Pandav Temple, is also in the renovation process. River Sindhu and Vitastha, around which the veil of Kashmir exists, have their confluence at a place called Naran Bagh. Greyish colour of the river Sindhu and bluish green colour of the river Vitastha are clearly visible. Suya, the able engineer of King Avantivarman, by his skill shifted the position of Vitastha, Sindhu Sangam, from Parihaspora, Trigami area, to its present location in the vicinity of Sundari Bhavna by forcing the course of Vitastha North eastwards by blocking its original course with embankments to reclaim the cultivable land from the flood-prone areas and marshes. A Vishnu temple by the name of Yoga Swamin was also built by Suya at the insistence of King Avantivarman. This temple also might have met the same fate at the hands of the intolerant iconoclasts as was meted out to innumerable other temples in the Vale of Kashmir. At present, however, a small Shiva temple has been made by the devotees and they seem to be determined to rebuild a temple at the old site matching the magnificence of the original one. Cultures evolve and are nurtured and enriched by generations after generations. Kashmiriyat too has been existing for around 10,000 years. Knowledge and spirituality will keep on emanating from the soil of Kashmir as the pristine rivers 
Sindhu and Vitasta will keep on flowing out of it. How the present and future generations of Kashmir imbibe the values of peaceful coexistence, love for nature and scientific temperament of their ancestors, time alone will tell.